All right, hello. Welcome to episode 21. It's definitely episode 21. I have no confusion on the matter this time. We have real business to do, so no none of my goofy jokes or confusion to start things off. This is already getting too goofy, so I have I'm moving on. So, uh what we need to do uh, as I kind of described at the end of last episode is we have this thing now that lays out a keyword table. Right? And uh it measures for us how many, how much error was on that layout, and the amount of error is based on how many steps of a linear probe it has to do. Now there might be points later on where we want to not do linear probing anymore, but whatever scheme we use here for the layout it has to be the same scheme we use that, like, has to, we have to use the same scheme for the lookup essentially, right? So I don't want the scheme to be too complicated so that I have a hard time getting getting it working in both places. Um, and I'm pretty sure we can do a pretty good job just on this linear linear probing method. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to write in here a system that optimizes. So let me show you what happens when I run this right now is, you know, I should, I should add one other thing. We see um, slot count, slot count. All right, so when I run it right now, I say basically here's some scratch memory, here are the keywords, and it just uses some pre-chosen random parameters. Um, there's, I guess, one more thing I should do, which is like um, used count or something, and that'll come from the keywords count, like that. All right, so we see we have 66 is the number of um, uh, keywords we're trying to lay out. 86 is the number of slots we used in this table, and 76 is the total error. So the total error is like every time two things were light, laid out in the same spot, and it had to increment one to try to put something in the next slot over, it would c count that as one error. If it had to increment a second time, that's two errors, and so on. So each in each individual increment is another single error by itself, right? Uh, but sometimes when we insert a word, that could be worth five or six errors. Like if right now I went to insert a new word to this table and it landed here, I would get one error for that, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26 errors. So one more insert could grow this by 26 if it landed right there, right? Now it has just as much of a probability of landing there as any other slot here. And a lot of these slots are still null, so it could get zero error or just one, right? Or just two. Wait, where would the just two be? Right. So there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of randomness involved to that. So the way I'm gonna going to, um, it's not randomness per se, but it's sort of chaoticness, static, static chaos that my brain only can comprehend as random. So I'm going to model the concepts as random in my head and say all we need to do is alter um, come up here, opt keys. What we're going to do is alter these parameters here in this spot here and try to minimize my error score and slot count um, as much as possible and see what results I'm getting out and if I like the results, right? So step one is going to be I need a good random number generator for 64-bit random numbers that can go right here. How am I going to do that? I don't want to spend all day like writing my own random number generator or you know anything like that and I also want to have enough random numbers that like I don't want to have like a table of a thousand random numbers because I want it to have a chance to generate any possible like, I want I want the 64 bit space to be uniformly randomly selected from right uh, I don't really want to use the standard library one though because it doesn't really give you 64 bits of randomness. It doesn't even give you like 32 bits of randomness. At best, maybe it could give me one bit of randomness, and if I run it 64 times, then I can get something kind of like 64 bits of randomness. But even that's not really how random numbers work. This, uh, it's not, uh, it's not great to do that, um, and it would be slow too. So I'm gonna say. Maybe I can go and gank this off of a different project real quick or something. I'm trying to think of the best way to do this. I mean, I don't necessarily need to actually do random is the thing. Because the seeds don't really have any, like, it's not like 
bopping over to a different random seed actually makes a big difference. I could actually just start on one random, like if I have a random number generator, like I use the standard library's random number generator for now, just to get 64 bits of random information and then increment one off of that or something, that would actually be plenty of randomness for my purposes for now because I don't even need, I don't even really need each consecutive number to be random, I just kind of want to start from a random position and guarantee with a high probability that I'm not repeating any two things. I think that's enough uh, of a spread of the random space for me. Um, I just want to make sure that it has a chance to try lots of different numbers is the thing. Hmm. I guess I guess I'll just go see if I can get like a copy of PCG or something. gonna be really small text, sorry about that. Um, what even is this file? pcgbasic.c Alright, let's try this. I copy these right into here now hopefully that just builds without me having to do anything weird right I think it will. Um, can I include pcgbasic.h here and pcgbasic.c right here and just call it a day? Are you going to allow that? Alright, what's the complaints here? Conversion from 64 bit to 32 bit. Yeah, okay. Let's uh, hold your hand a little bit here. Compiler. Okay. Trust me. Um, oh, yikes. I don't know if that's going to be. Like, that's probably just nothing, right? I mean, that's probably nothing. I don't know for sure, but. If they're doing that, that must mean that this is defined to have a behavior and they're giving me a warning to just to be a dick. I, I, I don't know what else to interpret that as. Um, why can't I... How am I building this? How is this building? Build C++ Lexer Generator. Build Generator. Um... Yeah, WD. All right, so I want to just extend this with WD four one four six. Okay, not bad, not bad. By the way, sorry if I haven't had those up. I try to leave those up so you can see what file I'm on. I forgot today. I think. Wonder how many episodes I screwed that up for. Oh well, it's fixed now. So, moving on. Okay, so how does this come with a little like here's how you use this thing like
Okay, so I just need to call PSG PCG thirty two S random. Now, does that guard against me not knowing how this works, or do I have to get a good seed in sequence? Okay, so here you're making sure that my... Any, okay, so I can do whatever I want to put shit in there, and you'll make sure that it's... Um, that it's good, and then... Okay. Alright, okay, that looks good. There's how you initialize it. Here's how you give me a random. And you're here, you're giving me a random with a bound. Okay, and this gives me 32 bits of randomness, not 64 bits of randomness. Um, but that that's actually going to be fine for me because I'll just, I'll just get it twice. And I know that I probably should actually ask you for a 64-bit random number generator if that's what I'm going to use it for. But I'm not being super precise about this right now. So it doesn't matter. Uh, Um, where is my opt key layout stuff now? Okay, so before this begins, I want to come down at the beginning and just say that we're going to have to seed our random number generator. So PCG 32S random. I'll use the global ones so that I don't have to pass a new pointer through my whole system. Um, initial state init sequence. Um, so how am I going to get two 64-bit randoms that are different every time. I wonder if there's like ever been a good way to do this. Um, so what happens if I get the time from the C standard library? Um, Just looking stuff up over here, sorry. Only take me a minute, I'm looking for a quick easy way to get a random seed, so... Looks like time is the easiest way to do it. Problem is if I do that twice, I'm gonna get the same thing twice. But, oh well, I guess, is my answer to that. And so then I'm just going to quickly include time.h right there. Okay, so that initialized my random number generator. And then up here where I have this, now when I need a random 64-bit, I'm just going to go use 64 pcg or opt random u64 dirty dirty because I'm not doing a very good job of this. Uh, give me a PCG32 random twice and then return whatever you get when you cast the B to a 64-bit number, shift it up by 32 bits, and then OR it with the A number, right? Which you should also treat as a U64 probably, just, just, just so you know. Just make sure it's all 64-bit. You know what, better yet, rather than doing all that work to cast this shit around, why don't we just do this? These are 64 bits. Right? Uh, there you go. Okay. So now, I'll just call this random u64 dirty, and random u64 dirty will give me my seed for my hash 
Then what I'll do is I will say we want a result layout that we're eventually going to return. And we want, um, as we're going, we want to keep track of our best score equals, and then we'll do max u64 to get things started. And then um, we'll do a for loop that, come on, there we go. Do a for loop that repeats like like a hundred times or something, I don't care. Maybe you need to tune that over time uh, so that we're not repeating as many or repeating more or something. And then we'll do a uh, keyword layout. Uh, I'll call this best layout, right? And our layout has a score in it, so I actually just want to take the best layout dot error score and set it to max u64. There we go. And then I'll make a particular layout, opt key layout. I will stick in these are the same thing, keywords dot count. So I'm gonna have a thing here that's like the current slot count that we're trying for, and I'm gonna start with it just being equal to that. Right, and we're gonna try. I'm gonna start with just just doing like two, right? So we can or one even, so we can see what this looks like when it just does one. And um, then what we're gonna do is say, look, if the layout error score that we get there is less than the best layout error score we've got, then our best layout is now this layout here, right? <sighs> okay. Otherwise, what we could do is reserve a little memory by saying that we begin a restore point right here on the arena, right? And if we aren't going to keep this table, then let's just go back to that restore point. So only those tables which actually beat the previous table get kept. We're still keeping more tables than we need. We could probably make it, get it down to less memory waste than that even, but pff, I'm moving quickly and who cares? It doesn't matter right now. We're not going to run out of memory. So there we go. My error score is 338, then 200, then 264, 264 again, 298, 414, 176. So the problem I'm going to have is that this here, wait, why did I get, I guess I just got unlucky that I happened to get the same error count twice. It had nothing to do with my C, did it? I mean, I guess if I'm running it fast enough, I will get that because I only get a new seed every second. Right, so I won't see um, ch this number changing unless I were if I. But if, if that won't happen here because this is this here isn't using time. So as long as I don't run the program twice in the same second, I won't see that happening. Right. So now the point is, what happens if I run it ten times and take the best result? What kind of results do I tend to get? One sixty, one seventy two, one seventy eight. So you can see I'm already doing a little better. I'm not seeing 300s ever. I'm sometimes seeing a 200 get in there. But what happens if I run this 100 times? Okay, 142, 108, 138. So just trying enough of these tends to shrink that error score down pretty well, which is cool. Um, but that error score is still too high. So what I want to do is I kind of want to have like um, a series of... Um, I think I'm gonna do it like this, right? I'm gonna go um, accumulated error equals zero. This is not even gonna look like this at all anymore. Accumulated error equals zero. And then with each step, I'm gonna take the accumulated error and increment layout. I will also figure out if we've, um, uh, you know, if our error score is within, um, you know, I'll, I'll keep updating my best layout in this way, like this, right? Trying to by checking error score only. But what I'm going to do is with my accumulated error, if the accumulated error grows beyond a thousand or grows to a thousand or more, then what we're going to do is we're going to increment the slot count by one and reset the accumulated error. Accul I really need to look, learn how to spell accumulated 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 I should probably just check the spelling on that anyway even though I'm saying now that I think it's correct it could still be totally wrong accumulated very good 
So my slot count goes up by one, my accumulated error goes to zero, and I go again. Now, here's the next question is when does this outer loop here ever break? So I'm occasionally going to step up my slot count, um, but I think the answer is I just want to like, let's say I just do like a thousand, um, at most. Or rather, what I should probably do is this. I'm going to say, yeah, let's say I do at most a thousand tries. So if I do more than a thousand tries, then I just stop with whatever the best thing I've gotten so far was. But the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, if my best layout dot error score ever gets below 10, right? I'm going to set that as my threshold. So what we have here are constants that are starting to develop. So this is I32 um, max number of tries equals a thousand. I32 acceptable error threshold equals 10. So let's say we get to the acceptable error threshold, then we just quit then, okay? Accumulated error plus equals layer, layout error score. Max number of tries. Max number of tries. Bloop. So what we ended up with had an error score of 13. That suggests it never actually reached 10, and it had to go to a slot count of 125 to find it. I guess the other thing I should probably add in here is U64 max accumulated error equals, and then I'm going to set this higher. So I had it at a thousand. Let's go with like um, 10,000 accumulated error. Accumulated error threshold. Right. Let's see how that goes. Okay, so with that, I'm not getting quite as good of a result. So what changed that led to that? Well, I'm not um, letting the table grow quite as large by keeping the accumulated error larger. So it's spending more time trying to make smaller tables work. Um, in exchange for that, I'm uh, getting smaller tables with slightly higher errors, and I'm still never going to reach that thre threshold. So what if I drop this down instead of up? I want to see what it takes to actually start reaching the th error sh threshold. So there we go. We got an error score of 7, which means there are only 7 places in this whole thing where you have to increment past it. But what is our you know slot count to used count? It's pretty high. So I want to do a little something here. Used count standard out. Um, I'm going to call this like um, hmm, this is sort of the table load factor, I believe is what they call it. And um, what we're really going to do here is take the number of used slots and divide out the number of total slots. And what that gives us is a number between 0 and 1 that, that sort of represents how much usage we're getting out of the table. So here we're not even using half of the table, right? Um, so the next goal is going to be let's do a few things. Let's say that we'll go with a thousand like we were before and let's give this thing 2,000 tries instead. Okay, so that's slightly better and we're hitting our threshold of 10. Let's, um, let's make a couple changes. So 10, I guess my actual ideal would be that I have my threshold be relative to my, my acceptable error threshold be relative to the total number of spots I have. Essentially because the more I'm trying to store, the more things I'm trying to store, it just makes sense that there be a, a lot for more collisions. Or to put it another way, I care about the average error per lookup, and so I'm kind of saying that the acceptable error threshold should be a f like a multiple of this because one error per lookup is the same in this table. If the error if the error total is 
66, then that means I have on average one error per lookup. And if on a different table with 10 slot used slots, I had an error count of the slot, an error total of 10, then I would have an error score of 10 being the thing, right? So essentially, it, what I'm getting at is the acceptable error threshold should really be somehow related to this so that larger tables have a higher acceptable error threshold since my error is an absolute error and what I really care about is making sure that the number of errors per lookup or the number of like iterations per lookup in a more literal sense uh, is minimized not the number of total iterations that that table will ever have right so from that perspective my acceptable threshold being below 66 now says I'm having less than an error, one error per lookup which is already really cool and my table load factor only got to here so what I could do now is say let's give this thing way more time per spot so let's go back to 10,000 right by increasing this accumulated error threshold I allow it to spend more time on a particular size of table um, so that even if it finds the best one, what I kind of want to do is say don't quit as soon as you find somebody that hits this. What I want you to do is say if this has happened, okay, I see. So if we reach the accumulated th error, we normally do this, but if our best layout has exceed, like has passed the error threshold, then don't grow the table. We found a table that is already on whose best our best error score is now within our error threshold, so don't grow the table, right? Just take what we've got. That's the idea. So now, I'm getting a load factor all the way up at 0.95 with less than an error per slot, and I'm only having to use three extra slots. That's, oh my goodness, that's pretty fun. Okay, so for three extra slots, I now have, at mo on average, one error per lookup. But, this is where it starts to matter what my, at, like, maximum error is, right? Because, um, by the way, down here where I'm doing null, I should like do something to make the nulls and the strings look different. So I'm going to do this. Right. So there we go. Um, that one did not turn out as good, which is sad. Um, I had a particularly good one and I just lost it. They're all still pretty good, but this one's like plus 10 instead of plus 3 on that size. And its error is worse. So what that kind of recommends to me is I need to just give it more time, right? I need to give it more time on each level to find what it's got to find. It's still not taking that long to do, but you know, now it's finding it. I want it to find it more regularly, something that good. There we go. Okay. Yeah, that's a pretty good result. Um, so, yeah, now it's kind of like when it picks something, it's kind of weird because every time you run this code, you're going to get a different um, table, um, which maybe is a bit of a weird way to set things up. But if I had a little more structure around how my metaprogramming stuff works here, I would keep track of my favorite. Like the, w the system would have a way of saying, "Hey, here's the best table I've ever found. I'm holding on to it until, you know, whenever I run the generator, I'll look again and see if I find anything better. But I'm still gonna remember my favorite one so that I don't keep changing it every single time. Only when I find an improvement, right? And then that'd be kind of cool because it just means you could run this sort of thing in the background and it'd constantly be looking for an optimization by poking in random seeds, seeing what it finds. Um, but anyway, the point is, um, this is really cool. So now it's finding very small error scores with only a little bit of extra room to breathe, right? It looks like it can't find, at least in this much time, but it looks like it might not ever have been able to find, or it's just way too rare to find something that's within the error threshold. Well, I guess this isn't actually within the error threshold anymore, is it? It's now exceeding its max number of tries in order to do this. So I want to 
make this almost a non-factor. So Alright, so that took a little more time. And uh interestingly, you'd think that the amount of time it takes is related to the slot count it comes up with at the end. Yeah, so now it's gotta get about one more extra slot to actually beat the threshold usually. It still can find pretty good results. Around. like the fact that it can beat the threshold with only two empty slots is really cool but this isn't good enough anymore because if, it, if the table is going to be that small then it actually does matter how big the max lookup is right it's not good enough to just say here's our total um, error score because I need to know what my max single error score is as well uh, just because I want to make sure that these errors are being spread around evenly because if my errors aren't spread around evenly then for all I know a very important keyword like 4 might have a really high error um, so that everyone else has an error of like 1 or 2 even though like thread local is not a keyword I'm ever going to use, templates not a keyword I'm ever going to use so I could go as far as to say that I want to assign an importance to each of these based on how frequent I expect them to be in my own code and that I want the error ratios that each one contribute, like the, the ratios of how frequent I want them to be should match up to, you know, their total error in a sort of, like, um, histogram way, the histogram should look similar, right? Uh, I don't know if I want to do that because um, that involves one, me encoding a concept of frequency that I just don't want to bother to do. I mean, I could just scan all of the four coder code to get the answer for that histogram, right? The four coder code base could work as my example of here are how I use keywords, the keywords in this set, and run the histogram, ba like run the um, optimization in such a way. It, it's actually kind of reverse of what I said. It's not match the histogram, it's invert the histogram. So anywhere where you see a keyword that doesn't get used at all, you would essentially be saying, like high error is fine and the keywords like four should have very low error and that would just be super sophisticated and cool I'm not gonna do that um, one like I said because or like I was gonna say is because my frequency of usage doesn't necessarily have a lot to do with anyone else's frequency of usage uh, maybe it'd be cool to say hey here's a little thing where you run this on your code base and it'll optimize my lexers cache tables to be as fast as possible for your code. That'd be kind of cool, right? A little bit cute. But um, the second reason I want to do it is because it's just a lot of work for really incremental gains. But I do think what we could do for sort of universally applicable gains and that is simpler to implement than all of that is just trying to balance out the amount of error that each of these has. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep track of an additional piece of information. So here's my keyword layout. And right now I have a keyword planner in each slot. I'm also just going to put a um, contributed error array in here. And so when I'm making these slots, um, I'm also going to make a contributed error array. And whenever we go to store something in the array, we're also going to store the contributed error. So U64 contributed error equals zero. Layout dot contributed error index equals contributed error. And then instead of incrementing my error score, I'm going to increment my contributed error by one. And at the end, I will increment the error score by the contributed error. Okay? So what that's going to do is that's going to let me keep track of a second piece of information, which is um, in addition to the error score, I can look at the max single error score right and so what I can do is say that initially that'll be zero and every time we finish one of these the layout dot max contributed max single error score can equal the maximum of itself and the new contributed error so just take the larger of those two and keep it right and now when I go to say here is the error score down here I can also say single max single error score right there next to it and give me an idea of how bad the worst case is in my table so my worst case right here is 11 
right? Seven, eight, six, nine, twelve, ten. Okay. By the way, I don't really love having to wait that long, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease the quality of the table for now, and it'll only be when I want to do like a hardcore optimization run that I'll tune this differently, but I'm going to say let's, let's drop the cumulated error down by a factor of 10. That's going to make bigger tables, but it shouldn't take as long. What's going on there? Let's try 5,000. This should have less trouble finding um, it, it's going to favor large tables more quickly in exchange for com uh, execution time but it's not actually working at all it feels like Okay, what am I not misunderstanding? Seems like it isn't going that much faster. I can't necessarily wrap my head around why it's so much slower. Um, uh, is it really that it keeps hitting max number of tries? But it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be hitting that. It should be hitting this case, right? It's just try this out foo if you hit that case okay okay so it is eventually hitting that case i guess it just has to Accumulated error. Can the accumulated error really be growing so slowly that that's happening that slow? I mean, suppose my accumulated error threshold was only 100. Shouldn't it? Oops, why did I take that out? Just wanted to take you out. Shouldn't it just like what if it's 50, right? So it can't even, it should increment the size every single time. Still really weird. Okay. What about this then? Every time you increment the size, give me a. play by play of how often that's happening. It's happening every time. 66, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 73. Okay, so it is in fact having to go to a pretty large table now that I've dropped the error threshold down so that, whoa. What is this? What is this? Who is this? Accumulated error. Somebody's infinite looping. Um, I don't know, it looks like it's finished executing. Let me close this. Take a quick double check that generator isn't still running. There it is, it's still running. Um, Okay, so that's actually bad. Something else is happening here I need to understand. <sighs> Who is that? Who's doing that? That's fine, I don't care about this. Sh take me back to here. Okay. So you get another seed. You that is restore point, you do a layout, slot count one, error score zero, maxing. 
So what is your acceptable error threshold? I see. So your accumulated error never goes up because your error score is zero. And so unless you hit that one million tries, you're never going to exit. I see. So I kind of want to probably just take a better look at how I want to organize this then. So really what I'm trying to create is a situation that goes like slowly steps up the size one by one until it finds the smallest size it can find where it hits a success. What I was trying to do with this accumulated error thing was to say in situations where we're getting lots of error we want to move on more quickly. In situations where we're not getting a lot of error we might as well try again because we're closer, right? But we still want a thing that like caps out and I just wanted to make it sort of like it was sort of scaled. So like things that were getting errors that were really big would cap out very quick. Things that were getting really small errors wouldn't cap out so quick. There is a little bit of um, pro pro trouble there. One is if the error scores are, if it's getting me perfect tables with no error score, which makes sense because that table that was laying out only had one element. It's always going to have an error score of zero then we're never going to hit that point where it checks to see if it, you know, where it rolls over. Okay, so some of this stuff is starting to make sense why it was going so slow as well. So I'm going to drop this down to say, look, give them like 10,000 tries, not a million. Um, that should be enough. Give them a thousand as the accumulated error threshold. But what I really want to do here is say, let's start with for i32 slot count equals keywords dot count. And there we go. Um, okay. Your accumulated error is zero at each step of that. And then inside that, you can do this loop here if you want. Then what we're going to do is say, this is not max number of tries, so this is just a loop. And instead what happens is every time we do a try, we're going to have oh, here a total like try counter, zero. If that gets to max number of tries, then we will break out with whatever we our best result is, right? So for each try, what we're doing is getting a seed, laying it out, adding that to the accumulated error, kind of, but not exactly. Because what we also want to do is we want to subtract the accept error threshold and then the other thing we want to deal with is the fact that that's only you know that's sort of like um, u64 um, error accumulation value equals zero and then if the layout error score is greater than that, our error accumulation value can be that, right? Now the problem is that means that our accumulated error is not always going up. So our accumulated error case here won't always happen. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to say that there's just a maximum number of tries at any particular layer regardless of anything else. So I32 layer maximum number or I'll call it layer max number of tries equals and that'll be something somewhat small like a hundred and so then what we do is we say um, can't use try that's already taken um, I'll just go with i equals zero i is less than layer maximum number of tries i plus equals one no that doesn't work either what I need more is like i32 try layer try counter equals zero layer try counter plus equals one and then down here, we don't need to do the slot count or the accumulated error thing. But what we want to do is basically say, if our accumulated error has gotten big enough that we're like, this just isn't working, or if we've done as many tries as we care to do. So, or if our layer try counter is 
greater than or equal to layer max number of tries, then we're going to say, okay, if our if we've reached our error threshold, then go to finished. Essentially double break, right? Otherwise, break only out of the layer loop and go to the next slot count. Max number of tries still wants to get applied, so along with that, what we're going to do is every time we do one of these, our try counter is going to go up by one, and I think our layer try counter should go up by one right there too. And so as we are doing this, in addition to that check, we're also going to just say, look, if our try counter reaches our max number of tries overall, that'll also be a cause to go to finish, even if we haven't reached our threshold yet, um, because we don't want to spend all day looking for something. So there we go. That is not infinite looping anymore, which is good, and it's giving us pretty good results for really fast runs, right? Error score of 59 with 78, that's a little higher than what we were getting before. And then if we want to tune this for optimization, what we do is we just say, all right, give us 100,000 total tries and 100,000 total accumulated error. And then we start getting like our smaller numbers here, right? Um, that's still not enough. 72, I mean, that's pretty good. 72, 73, 70, 70. Where's my 69s though? I used to be getting 69, so how do I get a 69? I had a really low error score on that one I just saw. Which is cool. But, um, give me more. The higher my accumulated error goes, the more, or, like, error threshold goes. Oh, you know what the other thing is I probably have to do? Is at some point, incrementing that's not going to help, and I'm going to need, like, more tries on each layer. Right. Come on, give me the 69 again. How do I tune it to get 69s? I know you know how to find, there it is. So yeah, I need to just start pushing this way, way up if I want to get the thing that runs slower but finds really good small tables. 67, I just saw 67. Still, there we go. Still having a little trouble finding them. So if I let it just have endless tries there and a really high accumulated error, that should be where it starts to find these frequently. Yeah. Okay. So this is cool. Now what we want to do is we want to study this number here. So that's what this is all about initially was, all right, drop this back down to um, there, drop this down to there. And so, you know, what I should really do is say, like, let's save two different versions. There's the one that gives you 100,000 tries per layer, and that's just the same as our max number of tries. So that they're just both basically like, look, I'm going to try to stay out of your way. And this will be like, heavy optimization effort and this will be like low optimization or light optimization effort right and so this low optimization effort one you give them a hundred tries in each layer you give them like one thousand accumulated error and you give them ten thousand maximum number of tries and see what they get that way I'm still doing heavy optimization error. Switch it over. Alright, so there we go. That's light optimization effort. It's allowing the tables to grow by 10 or more-ish to find what it's looking for, or at least this table it's allowing it to grow about that much. 10, 11, 12. Wow. Sometimes only two still, if it gets lucky. Uh, but what we want to do is study this. So this number is often like an 8 or a 9 or a 10. I kind of want to see that go towards a 1 right? 
I want the max single error. It's not ever going to be a one because half of all things, like if you have um, good distribution, right? If your if your average number of errors is one error per insert, right? Or one error per lookup. If that's the error you end up at, the total error you end up at. The average is one, but that doesn't actually mean that they all have an error of one. If everything has an error of one, that means nothing's actually in its original spot, its correct spot. And that'd be an unusual case in any table, but a very impossible case in a linear probing system that doesn't move things around after they've been placed. However, with Robin Hooding, what I think we can do is we can drive this number way, way lower. So what is Robin Hooding? How do we do it? Well, I'll explain it a little bit now, and it'll be something we have to apply next time. So Robin Hooding is where, as you're doing the linear probing, what you do is you say, you look at your total error, and it's like, I've stepped over three times now from where I want it to be. And you look at the person, the, the thing in the slot you're at. If the thing in the slot that you're at has a lower total error than that, like it's only two away from the spot it wanted to be at, what you do is you say, hey, Someone has to take the error. Someone has to move over to the next slot, right? I don't. It could be me. It could be you. So the total error is going to be the same either way. But to keep down our maximum error for a single spot, I'm going to take the three and instead you give up your two and look at the next spot, and maybe you'll get a three. And if you're going to end up with a four, it's only going to be a four because there's either a three. There's a three in the way there. Because if there's a two in the way there as well, it will move over too, and so on. So you kind of trade whose responsibility it is to keep getting farther away from their insert point as you go so that at any given time yes you're still accumulating one error one t one more on the total error at each step but the um, uh, the cool part is that you never have someone have to like go and be a total error of six when everyone else in the chain was only a total error of two from what they wanted to be at and therefore everyone could have had a total error of three if you'd like balance things out better, right? So we want to drive this towards one. We can't necessarily get it to a one because getting it to a one would mean that there is nothing anywhere that's in its original spot, which would be weird, right? If everything is at least one off of its original spot, then all you have to do is shift it all to the left by one and all of a sudden everybody's error just went down, you know what I mean? So that'd be a bad situation to be in actually. It meant that you were very wasteful because there was an easy optimization to undo the waste by shifting everybody over to the left one. Um, once there's somebody at zero, you can't shift to the left anymore because then shifting to the left would basically take them out of the sequence that makes it even possible to find them. But yeah, there's never going to be a table in the Robin Hooding situation that has no... Um, What sort I'm looking for? That has no. That has like a max single error of one necessarily, but we could try to drive it towards that. And hey, our total, our average error isn't even 66, which means it is possible that we get this all the way down to one, which would be super ideal. So that'll be what we do next time. Is we're going to. In improve the base layout logic. So this is like the layout logic that does the search through the parameter space of si table sizes and random seeds to look for a um, uh, particular layout that is really good. Um, but we are going to go back to the low level layout part, the part that actually decides who goes where inside the layout and improve it to do some Robin Hooding to see if we can get max single error score down. Okay? All right. Thanks for hanging out. See you all next time. Bye-bye.